Hi all, this is Sammy from Avid CNC, and today we're diving into how to manually zero your CNC machine in Mach 4. You might use this zeroing strategy when machining live edge or non-square workpieces, or if you don't have a touch plate available. I'll demonstrate how to set your zero manually using this hexagon cheese board that I've cut out previously. I'd like to add an engraved design of the girly shop teacher logo for my friend Tammy who's just an awesome maker and educator. This workpiece is a great example since there are no traditional corners to reference. I'll go ahead and mark the center of my workpiece. You can also use this method to set the work offset to your preferred datum location such as the corner of a workpiece. Let's walk through the steps to set the datum to the center of our workpiece and the top surface of our material. First, let's home our CNC machine in Mach 4. Next, we'll select our work holding method and attach our workpiece to the spoiled board. I have a few homemade wooden clamps that I can fasten down with some screws. Let's select a V-bit for setting our XY offset. I prefer a 60 degree V-bit. They work well because the sharp angle creates a clear point that's easy to see when it's aligned with your mark. Then we'll go ahead and install the V-bit. There are two types of jogging movements, continuous and incremental. Continuous jogging mode means if you hold down the arrow key or jog button on the jogging tab, the machine will move in that direction until the button is released. Incremental mode allows set dimensional movements. Each click will move the spindle in that direction at that set increment. In Mach 4, let's navigate to the jogging window. We can see our incremental jog step is currently set to 0.1 inches. Clicking the incremental jog step button will cycle through the default options. You can customize these to your preferred dimensions. To use incremental jog with the jog buttons on the jogging tab, switch the button jog mode from continuous to incremental. To use incremental jog with your keyboard arrows, hold control and click the arrow key. We'll sneak up on the center point by moving the point until the V-bit is just centered on the X. It's helpful to look at the V-bit alignment from a few different angles to ensure that it's centered. Once we're happy with the spindle location on X and Y, we can click the zero X and then zero Y buttons. Your X and Y datum is now set. We'll place a sheet of paper under the router bit on the surface we've selected for a Z axis offset. We'll lower the spindle in the Z direction by using incremental steps until there's resistance between the bit and the sheet of paper when you tug. I'll check the sheet periodically between moves. Once I'm happy with the location of the bit in relation to the surface I've selected, we can click 0Z. We've now zeroed to the center and top surface of our workpiece manually. You can go back and add the thickness of the paper to the Z offset if you'd like, but this is usually only a few thousandths and won't make a substantial difference in our V-carving toolpath, so we won't be doing that here. If your first tool is not a V-bit, go ahead and switch the first tool into the spindle. Then repeat setting the Z0 using the paper method. Let's go ahead and run our G-code program. The M6 code indicates a tool change, so I'll install the end mill. Now I'll repeat the paper method and lower the end mill using incremental steps until there's just the right space between the end mill and the material surface. Mm -hmm. 
I'll click 0Z, then remove the paper and lift the spindle up off the surface of the material. Then click Resume G-Code. That's it for this pro tip video. Thanks everyone for watching. I can't wait to see what you make and I'll see you in the shop.